Hello everyone, my name is George Slatkovsky and today we are going to explore the workflow of GS Curve Tools plugin for Maya. There will be a companion video to this video where we are actually going to explore all of the functions in uh, extreme details. But in this video we are going to explore the workflow. So you open the tool and you already want to start working. So what should you do? And we are going to do this uh, using this project as an example. So as you can see, we have uh, a bunch of cars over here, complex shape over here that consists of multiple cars and of course a braid over here. And I will show you how uh, those braids are made. Also, I will show you how to layer your groom properly. As you can see, it has quite a few details over here and uh, we are we will explore the basics of workflow using the curve tools plugin so if you want to go in depth with every function in curve tools you can go and watch this second video it will be released at the same time as this one uh, but if you just want to get started with the tool right now this will be the perfect one to start so let's get started so let's get started with the templates. The first thing that you want to do is to create uh, the templates that I showed you over here, these things, and set up your materials and UVs. So let's do just that. So we will create a new card over here, um, just like that. As you can see, it's now in the middle of the world. I will just rotate it. Let me just do this it like that and rotate it like that. And we have already a new card. Let me just fix it like that yes and we already have a new card so now in order to set up the material you just select the card you press up that's the easiest way uh, to select everything in that group and you go to existing materials and you uh, go to your hair textures so uh, the hair textures is very very simple you just uh, create a material oh, let me just go and so show you the hair textures over here come on as you can see, it's very simple. You create a simple Lambert texture over here and you plug the diffuse and alpha to this texture. You can also use this just uh, through the interface. Um, if you want, you can just plug the color and transparency over here. Uh, this is very easy and as you can see you already have your starting point. Now it is upside down, it's just how I rendered it, uh, but in order to set up the UVs you can just select this curve over here, not the geometry, and you open the UV editor. This is a custom UV editor just for this and we will start with this large um, texture over here. So I will select the texture, as you can see it's it's over here and it, it, it will be updated in the viewport. You'll, you'll select it using the select tool over here and you will uh, drag and draw a new shape over here using the draw, like uh, that. It's still upside down, so what I'm going to do is to flip it vertically like that or just press V as a hotkey over here. You'll see that all of those things have hotkeys over here. Uh, another way to do that is to just manually uh, position the card over here, just like that, and uh, just put it in place, scale it and scale it in different ways. As you can see, if I press R multiple times, it will change the scale axis like that. But I think that the easiest way is to just click on draw and draw your texture and flip it and that's it so i will do the same thing for every other texture over here now in order to do the same thing i just need more cards in the scene right the easiest way is to select the curve over here and click dupli duplicate it will automatically duplicate the card uh, you, you only need to select the curve it knows what it's it needs to do and you as you can see you already have two and i will do uh, this and flip duplicate I will do uh, this and flip. I will adjust it a little bit because I missed the thing. And I will do the same thing for every other texture. Now that you have all of your textures ready for use in this uh, project, you'll see that I actually used the last layer over here. So you can switch be between layers by clicking on it and the, the currently highlighted and clicked on layer, as you can see it has this white outline over here, it will be the active layer and everything you do 
most of it, uh, will go to that layer. So if you create a new card, it will go to this fourth selected layer. So I specifically selected the last layer over here, J. It, it's always the last layer um, because the last layer is ignored when you do some specific functions that we'll use later. And it's very handy because you don't need to mm, remove the templates from your exported mesh manually later. So just uh, know that you need to place templates in the last layer in this list. In this case, it's J. So now that we have our first templates, as you can see, they are a little bit to the right, just not to interfere with my work over here. Now that we have the first templates, it's time to create a first layer of your groom. The first layer is always the thickest, the more uh, dense texture that will cover the scalp of the head over here, just for the skin to not shine through uh, the groom. And it will look something like this. Uh, I will just show you, oops, I will just show you it uh, like for a second. Let me just enable another handy thing that we will discuss later, just like that. As you can see, it's not too many cars over here, but they have the densest textures. And this is just the first layer of the uh, like uh, base layer of your groom. So how can you set this up? You just let me just hide this over here. So you select your templates, you click duplicate and you just move it on the head just like that. And then you will switch to the points mode and you basically uh, slap it on the head just like that. So you can, of course, uh, use other metho the methods, but I think this is the fastest and the easiest way to actually place hair cards on the scalp just like that. As you can see, it's already in place. Uh, it needs some adjustment. As you can see, it now clips through the head over here, but you can do this with curve control window. In this window, you have all the controls for your cards over here. Don't be too intimidated. You do not need a lot of these uh, controls, but what I need right now is some orientation change. As you can see, it's a little bit clipping over here and I don't like how it slants over here. Let me just enable the default texture just for you to see. As you can see, it penetrates the scalp over here. So we will just select this and we will click, we will drag the orientation a little bit just to place it right where we want it. I still do not like the penetration over here. So I will just use twist just to twist it a little bit because as you can see, this thing is over here is already placed correctly. We can just do something like that. And over here, as you can see, it's already looking much better. Now, as you can see, those cards actually have a very specific shape. They're not just flat cards. You can do this very easily with curve control window. I will just reset it. Um, and as you can see, now the card is completely flat. This, this template card over here. So uh, you generally want to add, add some, some profile over here and you can adjust the profile here. As you can see, it's uh, almost flat over here and it's actually sticking out more over here. Uh, just use this profile graph and you can adjust the profile just like that. And as you can see now, it, it has a little bit better shape. The reason for that is that you want as much, much coverage as you can with limited polygons that you use. So you want this card to look not flat from as many angles as you can and this profile actually helps with that as you can see it's not that flat from the sides because if i just re uh, just remove the profile altogether you'll see that it will quickly became very flat like that so you just want to avoid it and use some profile over here and profile graph of course and that's why this card looks like that and as you can see our first card is already on the head and now the next thing is very easy. You just use duplicate over here. You can set up any hotkey you want for this duplicate. You just need to go to settings and preferences, hotkey editor. You can go to this uh, custom scripts, JS, and you find JS Curve Tools. This is the other pl plugin that I use. Uh, you find JS Curve Tools, you find utilities, and you will see that duplicate is right here. And I have it on Alt D which is very useful. And also there is a hidden key, delete curves. I have it on Alt X. Uh, this is very useful because in order to delete the card normally, you need to remember how we set up the texture. You need to press up and delete it. 
to delete everything from this scene because uh, every card is actually com uh, a complex object with uh, multiple uh, layers so you need to delete everything or you can just set up that hotkey that i showed you before and you select it and you press alt x and everything is done for you uh, you can just select the curve and delete it just like that so alt d to duplicate i will press alt d to duplicate nothing uh, seemingly happened it just they are just layered on top of each other right now and i will switch to points mode like that and i will start moving it a little bit, a little bit. as you can see it's uh, a little bit distorting we'll fix it in a second but i will just move it to the right just like that and we are now starting to layer our hair to adjust it a little bit and as you can see now we have the second part in place uh, there are some like intersections over here but of course you can use twist or inverted twist to um, change this a little bit or just whoops or just move the card a little bit more like that and that's it this is the workflow you just click duplicate or your hotkey and you start moving cards around just like that you start moving them you can of course rotate rotate multiple points just to make a little bit more interesting shapes it's not very important on the first layer but uh, you can still do that as you can see i can see that this uh, it doesn't conform to the head a little bit so i will just select it and i will just use orientation just like that and as you can see i already have a nice starting point now this is basically it for the workflow don't worry there's more things to show uh, but uh, this is the general workflow you uh, create templates and you start duplicating stuff around uh, using the curve control window and using layers to basically uh, spread the groom into different zones just for you to easily hide and show because if you look at this i can just press alt and show different parts of my groom very very easily with no problem and i can of course uh, isolate select stuff and uh, like alt shift as you can see i will isolate so select some some parts over here uh, there are more hotkeys you can just read about them if you hover over the zero layers there's a lot of stuff for you to learn uh, but uh, just use layers to spread your groom a little bit into different parts because it can get very complex so the first layer is done let's just go to the next one now the next thing that i've done with this uh, specific groom is i made this braid it's a multi-layered uh, thing it it's made it is made of uh quite a thick texture as you can see because it's very complex shape to be honest and it also let me just copy it between my things over here and it is also made of single sided cards like that that I just placed in the shape of this thick braid for something thinner there will be other technique that I will show you but for this you need to use this technique of layering um, like separate cards in the shape of this braid let me just hide the templates i'm holding alt by the way to click on those things as you can see it's it, it will take some time but using the twist orientation and stuff like that you will be able to do that pretty easily now uh this braid is actually consists of uh quite a complex objects over here as you can see it's not just a single card it's multiple cards stuck together to one curve now how do you do that this is very easy to do in curve tools uh, let me just unhide my templates and let's un let's uh, look at this one over here this is actually not the exact template that i used over here but uh, it still works uh, so let me just go to front view i will create a new curve just like that i will use the slider to rebuild it to some adequate values of cvs like that I will just do that and go to back over here and let's just uh, duplicate uh, I, will sh I will use alt d let's just duplicate a bunch bunch of cars over here and shape them like that as you can see uh, they're still a little bit flat so i will just put them them like uh, that and rotate them a little bit i will just i will just show you this once and you will be able to make your shapes 
whenever you want. Let me just r rotate this uh, this way. As you can see, it's already have a very dense shape over here. I will also decrease the width a little bit. And now we have three curves, but it will be a nightmare to control them uh, as one because it's it's just not very feasible. But you can select them and select this curve over here. That's this empty curve that I just created, the normal Y curve, and you can press bind. And as you can see, it's now bound to this one curve over here, and you can control it as one. And it's actually a little bit, a little bit faster than uh, to control the like three curves. However, you will see that you have you you lose some of the options uh, that you had before. So as you can see, you have quite a few things over here, and if you bind it, it's just this. But don't worry, this is more than enough. So. This is the first part. You bind a multiple uh, cards to uh, one curve, and after that, you can go ahead and place it just as the first layer uh, was placed. But if you want to adjust the UVs, for example, you will see that in this complex shape, right? If I open the UV editor, you will see that it's actually the front part of this texture. Because I want the color to be matching, I don't want this very dark part over here that is usually near the scalp. Uh, I want this color to be matching between different strands of hair over here. So what you can do, you can just select this complex bound object that uh, I just created. You'll see that we have three textures over here. You just select them and you place them right here. And of course, flip. And as you can see, we basically created the same shape as we had here. Three cards. And they are all bound to one curve for easy placement over here. And you can just then proceed to place them just like that. As you can see, it's very easy. Uh, it's actually a little bit too dense. I will decrease the number of CVs just like that. And I will just start placing them. I think I need even less than that. Placing them somewhere over here just like that. And as you can see, it's basically already in place, a little bit distorted over here. But of course, it's up to you to decide how many details you want. Now, let's just close this UV editor. And I can orient it over here. And as you can see, it's already starting to look a little bit better. And as you can see, with this advanced visibility, you can do this very fast with this card, knowing where the CVs are. So something like that. And of course, this what this is this was what I did with all of this uh, se the second layer. Now, when you have such a dense uh, texture like that, it can be hard to locate the curve that you need to move. The easiest way to, e to see the curves is to enable the X-ray mode over here, as you can see. And I already see all of the curves that I need and they are inside over here. So I can just select whatever I need and edit them, of course, just like that. And you can, of course, set up the hotkey or for this X-ray as well. And the other thing is to hide the things that you don't need right now. For example, this was the card that we placed before. Now, how to create a braid like that and like uh, those braids that I use in this project? As you can see, those are complex objects that are bound to one curve. So uh, you have a choice here. You can either polymodel this shape like this braid or export it from ZBrush or whatever you want and then bind it to one curve. Or you can use tubes because we don't uh, we not only have the cars, we can also create tubes just like that, as you can see, and they have their specific options for um, width and you can change them like that and uh, of course shape it however you want so what i did here i've created this shape as you can see it's just three curves like that i've created this shape that resembles a braid and then i created a tube out of uh, the, uh, those let me just show you it's it will be easier uh, out of those maya curves so i'll just select them and create tube just like that as you can see, the tube is now a little bit thin. I want them to be thicker. So I will just go and 
uh, change the width, uh, lock them together by this button. I will change width a little bit. Now they are a little bit too thick like that. I will unlock it. Uh, come on, unlock it. And I will make them a little bit flatter, just like that. And as you can see, it's already something like this. I can even do, go a bit thicker like that. And you can just uh, then assign the texture. As you can see, it's very easy. And I already placed the texture over here. And you basically have the same braid as I had before. And the same as we used with this complex shape over here. Let me just steal uh, this uh, curve over here. You just select both of them and you press bind. Just like that. As you can see, it's a little bit ugly because it's very, very long uh, shape over here. But we can do something like this. We can change the width a little bit. And we can taper it to the point over here, just like that. And taper it over here, just like that. And you, as you can see, we already have a nice braid. As you can see, now we can rebuild the curve to have... Uh, equally spread CVs like that. And that's it. That's the braid. It's very easy. You can then select this braid and you can use export curves and you will export it uh, to the separate file. And in this file, you'll, you'll just store your templates. You can select all of your templates or just separate parts. And then when you need it in the next project, you can just go options, import curves and import that specific file. Do not use Maya export and import with JS Curve tools because you will have a a lot of trouble with uh, with Maya export. Just use the provided export and import curves. So now that you have your newly created braid over here, uh, let me just delete this one and use my previous one. You can do the same thing to it as you did with every other card. You duplicate it. You place it on the head just like that. And let me just hide those and you start basically placing it i think i i've hidden it as well yeah let me just uh, place it into another layer over here because that layer needs to be hidden and uh, you just start placing it on your head just like that very very easy you can of course bind it um, to already made curve something like that and as you can see you already have a nice a little, bit, a little bit out of place, but a, a nice braid shape over here in like a few minutes. Now the next parts of this groom are basically more of the same. You create, uh, you use the template to create some shapes over here using all of the functions, duplicating, moving. As you can see, there, those are, for example, separate cards, the small ones. You can place them over here. You can duplicate them. Uh, the cool part about this, uh, let me just delete a bunch of cards over here, for example. Uh, the cool thing you can use is to use fill to place a bunch of cards at a distance from each other and then just use fill to fill the empty space between them. You can, you, you will need to select them separately and uh, the order of selection is important. So, for example, uh, if I have this and this card it will start placing from this it will place one card here here and and so on so you can select multiple cards but it will place pl place them based on your selection order so remember that um, but if you select just two cards it doesn't matter as you can see now it's it filled the space between those two cars and of course those are just regular curves uh, from curve tools you can do the same thing with them like uh, changing orientation twist and stuff like that the next layer is more of the same it's just thicker texture as you can see it changed i changed shape twist and stuff like that just to place it over here to um, make this shape more 
interesting and just like that layer by layer you will build your groom of course use tons of references because this was not made from like my imagination there were tons of references that i had on the side and i've matched it uh, to the references and also had like a, a mesh that i've created in zbrush that kind of resembled the shape of this braid and stuff like that so use as many tools as you need but the basic workflow is to create templates, duplicate and place it around on the head, just like that. And as you can see, slowly but surely you will start getting there. Now, if you let me just hide everything else over here, you will see that there are actually a lot of those tiny hairs. Those are basically like a detail, the flyaway hair, and that's um very important to actually make your hair a little bit more realistic because if you just have those dense textures and nothing else it will not look very great um, always use those filters over here because you can actually hide the geometry as you can see that's basically all the curves and if you click on geo you will show the geometry only without the curves and you can actually use it to uh, see your progress without the curves interfering and all will basically show everything as default now there is more features in uh, this tool than i showed of course but uh, this is not the goal of this video the, the goal of this video is to actually show you how this tool works and the basic workflow is very very simple as i already told you create templates uh, duplicate them, place it on the, on the scalp and then spread them in the layers so you can have better control when you need. Uh, because visibility can be a challenge when you have a lot of curves like that. And of course, don't forget about X-ray mode that will help you locate what you need. But even with X-ray, you still need to show and hide some of the things just for you to be able to see what you're doing. And of course, there's also advanced visibility. You can learn about it in the second video, but the basic gist is you enable this curve high highlight and when you, whenever you select the curve, it will show you a special highlight with uh, CVs clearly visible just for your convenience. Now, just a small introduction to all other features. You have fill that I already told you. You can uh, fill between the cards like that. It will do a pretty good job of matching them. Uh, you can also subdivide a single card. It will also use this number over here. You can subdivide it into multiple cards. For example, two will subdivide one card to two cards and place them uh, in the correct place like that. They will have a little bit different width to match the original width of the card, as you can see, uh, but it will just sub subdivide it. And of course, duplicate randomize will open this window. You can read about it all in the documentation. It's uh, just to randomize some stuff like that. As you can see, you can randomize the shape and the placement of CVs and other parameters over here. Uh, don't forget to click uh, randomize to actually apply what you uh, because this is just a preview. Clicking randomize will apply it. In order to check your work in the engine or in the Marmoset tool bag or whatever you're using, you can export it. But you don't need those all, all of those curves and stuff like that. Why do you need that? You can just go ahead and extract all. You click on extract all, it will think, think a little bit. Uh, it now duplicates all of the geometry components and it will merge it together into one complete mesh that you can just select and export. It will hide the original curves, so don't worry, it will not delete it. It, it, it as you can see, it's now just the geometry. Uh, those are hidden, as you can see, the layers are gray, but you now have a very convenient way to export. And as you can see, I uh, what I told you, when you export, the last layer is ignored. Those cards were ignored. But the eye layer over here that I had those templates temporarily, it was not ignored. So let me just place it here. Let me just delete this and show all and extract all again. And now, as you can see, it only extracted the geometry over here, but not the templates over here. So. That's very useful. And then, of course, you just export it at like normal mesh uh, in Maya. Delete, 
show all and you will show all of your previous cards so that is it this is the basic gist of uh, workflow with groove tools you can create new cards new tubes bind them together unbind them this will be in the second video uh, subdivide them fill duplicate randomize everything that you need you also have mirroring over here uh, a bunch of controls advanced visibility there are also like uv editor and stuff like that so there are a lot of things that you can use so just explore just uh, read Every button has a tooltip, you can read it just like that, just hover over it, or you can read documentation or just watch previous videos. There's a lot to discover here. So this is it, uh, this is the video. It was a bit fast, but I hope you still enjoyed it and you learned a lot. This is the basic, the basic workflow that you can use with this tool. There are a lot more things to discover. So. I hope you like this video and if you like this don't forget to leave a like and share with your friends maybe someone needs this tool uh, you can find all of the links in the description and uh, yep yeah, have a great day